Everybody look at that picture in the corner. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus of Christ, we come before you, O oh Lord. And we ask that you look upon us as we come back from this wicked place, these wicked lands of our captivities, and we return to you, Father, in righteousness and truth and justice as we learn thy name, as we learn thy ways, as we humble ourselves to your son, Jesus the Christ, who laid down his life so that we too can have life. Lord, we ask that you look upon us in these troubling times and look into our hearts and look into our minds and see our humility, see our honesty, see our strength that we get through thy word. Feel our pain, O Lord. Look at our enemies and strengthen us. Bring us through all the trials and tribulations and the plots and the plans and the schemes and the traitors who are amongst us and the people who are trying to stop the rebuilding of your nation. As we come before you, O Lord, and we go into the time of our forefathers, Judas Maccabees and his families, how they rededicated your temple, how they cleansed your temple, how they looked at what was right and what was wrong according to thy will, and they made changes, O oh Father. They tore down the stones. They tore down the building. They got rid of all the unclean vessels and the unclean stones and the unclean people that were amongst them, and they rededicated the temple to you in righteousness and justice and truth. Put that spirit upon us, O oh Father. Put that spirit upon our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our fathers, our children. Strengthen us as a congregation. Bring unity amongst us. Move away the division so that we can stand up in this wicked place and all the wicked lands of our captivity and come together as one. Everybody in the congregation say hallelujah. 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 In Christ's name we thank you and we praise you, O oh Lord. Bless the strong drink, bless the food, bless the union, and keep us in peace. Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, head salute, salute down. To the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. So how many of you is your first time here? Show of hands, your first time. Look at all these first timers. Glad to have you. What about this side of the room? Okay, not too many. All the veterans are on this side. The newbies are on this side. So y'all better be nice to them. Show them how we do it here. Turn this mic down a little. I'm getting feedback. Testing, testing. Yes, that sounds much, much better. So I always tell people, like, on Friday, I wanted to go over a piece of dedication. But we do the same thing every single year. People come in, they start asking me what's a piece of dedication, and they don't go to the website. You can teach the whole class just going to the website. Everything is on the website, IsraelUnite.org. Are we online? Are they watching us online? If you're online and you're watching and you don't know what's going on, Go to IsraelUnites.org, go to High Holy Days, and go to Feast of Dedication. It shows every single thing there, every single scripture, and you could just follow it from your home. Okay, Feast of Dedication was a time during the Maccabees. The Maccabees' time was 300 years before Christ. Okay, when the Greeks came in, and they were trying to destroy us as a nation because they saw that we were separate from the other nations. And our laws and our government and our standards and our statutes, they wanted all nations to be as one the way United States of America is. They wanted a, a, a melting pot. And the Israelites that were connected to the Father, we wanted nothing to do with what the other nations were doing. So the valiant men, starting with the family of the Maccabees, rose up and revolted against the heathen, against the Greeks. And that's why we have the story, and that's why we document it. Because guess what? We're doing the same thing now. We're standing up against this wicked place, 
and all the wicked lands of our captivity, we grow in our beards. We make it sure our children get circumcised. You read during that time, they didn't want the children to be circumcised. Okay? And there was strong, honorable women who openly boasted that their children were sacrificed and they were uh, circumcised and they became a sacrifice. They were put to death. They killed women and children because they were so connected to the father, they wanted to make sure that their children were circumcised. Some of you, would, without hesitation, will say, I'm not doing it because you don't understand how sacred, how important it was to us as a nation. Some of you men will shave off your beards because you don't understand how separate it kept us from the other people and you don't value your braid, your beard. Some of you won't wear your fringes because you feel you don't want to stand out. So if you look at the time that we're in with the Maccabees, where they were forcing us to eat pork, some of you will easily walk into the restaurant and ask for extra bacon and more pork, pork fried rice, spare rib tips. That was not the mindset, so it shows how low we've fallen as a people. That we don't understand these things. We don't know these things. And we want to return back to the Father in righteousness. So read this history with your kids. Your kids should not be thinking about no Santa Claus. A fat white man going down a chimney where fire comes out of at this time of the year. To hell with Santa Claus. Let him burn in that chimney. Let his reindeers attack him. Especially Rudolph. <laughs> You ever, see, you ever see reindeer attack people? All the reindeer should attack him and beat his ass and take his gifts. To hell with Santa Claus. Our mind should be on a piece of dedication. That's how the Lord wants us. This is how we come back as a nation. We learn the history. We apply it. We enforce it. We live it. We breathe it. All right. Happy peace, y'all. Happy peace. Glad y'all made it. I'm glad I can make it. So let's make this quick because of the simple fact that we have we're on borrowed time, unfortunately. Um, go to First Maccabees three, and we're gonna start at verse uh, forty two. Now, as Deacon Asap was saying, the feast that you can go to the website and you can damn near read the teach the entire class from that website itself. So I'm gonna do the same thing. <laughs> yes, it's that simple. It's everything uh, is there. You could you could teach the class without your Bible from yeah, the website, right? So I'm gonna do a little a little bit of a remix today. So so far we we managed um, all praise to the Lord. We managed to cleanse our sanctuary uh, this past Sabbath. That's all right, praise the Lord. And it was a beautiful. Praise the Lord. Give me a pause today. Give the Lord a round of applause. Cleanse our sanctuary. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord bless us with the ability to do it more. You know, if there's anything left. Uh, First Maccabees three and verse forty-two. Who's reading for me? Testing, testing. First Maccabees chapter three, verse forty-two. Now, when Judas and his brethren saw that miseries were multiplied. And that the forces did encamp themselves in their borders. For they knew how the king had given commandment to destroy the people and utterly abolish them. So Judas, Judas Maccabees. Judas Maccabees was our leader at the time. He was a father, he was a son of Mattathias. Mattathias was the father of five gloriously, glorious men, righteous men, um, who, uh, who he left behind to honor and to defend his people. All right? So Judas Maccabees was the warrior of the group of the five brothers. They were all warriors, but Judas, Judas was the leader, the fiercest one. Go ahead. They said one to another. So Judas Maccabees and his, and his men said one to another what? Said one to another what? Let us restore the decayed estate of our people. So our forefathers, our leaders, had a tendency to, to um, a mind to restore the dead estate of their people. All right, go ahead. And let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. Let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. Yeah. And watch this. That's exactly what our Israel United in Christ is doing right now. Mm -hmm. the, the bishop looked at the decayed estate of our people 
and said, we need to build it. That's why he, we didn't come to him as deacons. He showed us in the scriptures. We need deacons. We need captains. We need officers. And when he was doing that stuff, we didn't see the vision he saw. So the same spirit that was on Judas Maccabees is on the bishop and all the leaders down. They look at the destroyed estate of the people and they come together spiritually and say, let us, what? Read it again. Let us what? His mic went out. His mic, his mic, come on, his mic. That spirit is not on every Israelite camp. Every Israelite camp test, is test. not in the mindset of restoring the destroyed. If, if you go to a school and all they push in is multiple wives, they're not thinking about restoring the destroyed estate of the people. They're thinking about themselves. If you go to a school and all they push in is tithes, tithes, every end of every class is pay your tithes, pay your tithes. They're not, our forefathers, you don't hear that. They didn't ask for tithes for the rebuilding of the, of the temple. Read it again. Your mic ain't on. Testing. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 43. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed state of our people. Someone has to feel bad about our condition. And that's what we've been trained here as men to do. Look at the condition of our church, our communities, our households. That's why we're so big on marriage. That's why we had to get rid of the traders amongst us. There's traders trying to reinforce the decayed state of us. So we got to single them out and throw them out. Some of those sisters, I love them, but they was evil as hell. So that's why the scriptures tell you your enemies will be there of your own house. And we had enemies in the house of IUIC. Go ahead, Deacon. Uh, we don't. And let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. Continue. Then was the congregation gathered together that they, may, that they might be ready for battle and that they might pray and ask mercy and compassion. So they are ready for battle. You must always be ready and prepared for the battle when it comes to restoring the estate of your people in the, in the sanctuary. Go ahead. Now, Jerusalem lay void as a wilderness. There was none of her children that went in or out. The sanctuary also was trodden down. The sanctuary, the temple was trodden down. Go ahead. And aliens kept the stronghold. And the uh, aliens, not, so the illegal aliens is not us. The illegal aliens were the Greeks, the Europeans, the heathens that went into our sanctuary and defiled it. They are the illegal aliens over at that time. They're the illegal aliens in this side of the world in this time, too. Go ahead. And aliens kept the stronghold. The heathen had their habitation in that place. And joy was taken from Jacob, and the pipe with the harp ceased. Our joy was gone. Go ahead. Wherefore, the Israelites assembled themselves together and came to Mashpah over against Jerusalem. For in Mashpah was the place where they prayed aforetime in Israel. Come on. Then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth and cast ashes upon their heads and rent their clothes. 48. And laid open the book of the law. So when they got into the temple, um, they found the Bible. They found the Bible, our Bibles. Go ahead. And laid open the book of the law. And they opened it up. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. And the heathen sought to paint the likeness of their images in our Bibles. Some of y'all have Bibles or have or have had Bibles where the heathen have, have sought to paint their images of the Messiah, the prophets, the angels, all in the Bible of them, of, of our, who our fathers, of, right. uh, in their own image, right. in European images, okay, Euro, European imagery, which is speaking, which is madness. But, I, but the heathen have a habit of doing this, had a habit and have a habit of doing this, particularly the so-called white man Esau, okay? And why do they do it? Because they know the value of assuming the identity of the Israelites. You people don't value being Israelites. You like being called African, black, Negro. You like those names. But our forefathers looked at us. Uh, our enemies looked at us and saw that we were favored people. So when they took our records, they said, we need to become these people. There's power in that. 
And that's how y'all always got to think every single day. Go ahead, Deacon. You know what? They brought also the priests' garments and the first fruits and the tithes and the Nazarites they stood up who had accomplished their days. Then cried they with a loud voice toward heaven, saying, What shall we do with these? And whether shall we carry them away? Right. They, the, they, they found they found um all our, our vestments, the garments, all that stuff that's discarded. So they got a hold of it and said, What should we do with these things? Go ahead. For thy sanctuary is trodden down and profaned, because, and thy priests because are. The, I'm sorry, because the Greeks came in and defiled the temple. So what should we do with these things that belong, that pertain to the temple or the sanctuary? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. For thy sanctuary is trodden down and profaned, and thy priests are in heaviness and brought low. And lo, the heathen are assembled together against us to destroy us. What things they imagine against us, thou knowest. How shall we, able, how shall we be able to stand against them except thou, O God, be our help? Then sounded they with trumpets and cried with a loud voice. And after this, Judas ordained captains over the people, even captains over thousands and over hundreds and over fifties and over tens. Come on. But as so what, um, he established order, leaders to govern the people. Go ahead. But as for such as were building houses or had betrothed wives or were planting vineyards or were fearful. Or were what? Fearful. Go ahead. Those he commanded that they should return, every man to his own house, according to the law. When you were fearful when it came to rebuilding your people, the Lord said, just stay home. Don't, don't come here. Don't, don't bother. Don't bother helping us out. Go ahead. So the camp removed and pitched upon the south side of Emmaus. And Judas said, arm yourselves and be valiant men and see that ye be in readiness against the morning, that ye may fight with these nations that are assembled together against us to destroy us in our sanctuary. For it is better for us to die in battle than to behold the calamities of our people in our sanctuary. That's the leader. It's better for us to die in battle, he said, than to behold the calamities of our people and our sanctuary. Go ahead. Nevertheless, as the will of God is in heaven, so let him do. Next chapter. Then took Gagias 5,000 footmen and a thousand of the best horsemen and removed out of the camp by night. To the end, he might rush in upon the camp of the Jews and right, smite the heathen, them. It's the heathen trying to attack us. Go ahead. To the end, he might rush in upon the camp of the Jews and smite them suddenly. And the men of the fortress were in his guides, were his guides. Now when Judas heard thereof, he himself removed and the valiant men with him. And he might smite the king's army, which was at Emmaus. While as yet the forces were dispersed from the camp, in the mean season came Gagias by night into the camp of Judas. And when he found no man there, he sought them in the mountains, for said he, these fellows flee from us. So it says the mean season because this feast took place in the winter time. That's why it's called the mean season. This is terrible, terribly mean weather. Go ahead. But as soon as it was day, Judas showed himself in the plain with 3,000 men. Who, nevertheless, had neither armor nor swords to their minds. These guys are not warriors. These guys are not armed fighters. They weren't, they were not armed. They weren't um, skillful fighters. Go ahead. And they saw the camp of the heathen, that it was strong and well harnessed, and can pass round about with horsemen. And these were expert of war. So the heathen had expert men of war. Jewish Maccabees did not have expert men of war. Go ahead. Then said Judas to the men that were with him, Fear ye not their multitude, neither be ye afraid of their assault. Remember how our fathers were delivered in the Red Sea, when Pharaoh pursued them with an army. Come on. Now therefore let us cry into heaven, and per if peradventure the Lord will have mercy upon us, and remember the covenant of our fathers, and destroy, us, destroy this host before our face this day. That so all the heathen may know, that there is one who delivereth and saved Israel. Come on. Then the strangers lifted up their eyes and saw them coming over against them. Wherefore, they went out of the camp to battle. But they that were with Judas sounded their trumpets. So they joined in battle. And the heathen being discomfited fled into the plain. Right, so he won. So the Judas, Judas, Judas Maccabees um, men, the most put the spread upon his men to become better fighters 
than the heathen expert fighters. He calls them to flee. Go ahead. Howbeit, all the hindmost of them, the hindmost of them, were slain with the sword. Why? Because they were running away. The hindmost is the back. He would chase them out and kill them. Go ahead. For they pursued them unto Gezera and unto the plains of Idumea and Azostis and Jamna, so that there were slain of them upon a three thousand men. Come on. This done, Judas returned again with his host from pursuing them and said to the people, be not greedy of the spoils and as much as there is a battle before us. And yes. Gorgias and his hosts are here by us in the mountain. But stand ye now against our enemies and overtake them. And after this, ye may boldly take the spoils. As Judas was yet speaking these words, there appeared a part of them looking out of the mountain, who when they perceived that the Jews had put their hosts to flight and were burning the tents, for the smoke that was seen declared what was done. When therefore they perceived these things, they were sore afraid. And seeing also the hosts of Judas in the plain ready to fight, they fled every one to the land of strangers. Then Judas returned to spoil the tents. For they got much gold and silver, and blue silk, and purple of the sea, and great riches. After this, they went home and sung a song of thanksgiving and praised the Lord in heaven because it is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Mark. Thus, Israel had a great deliverance that day. Now all the strangers that had escaped came and told Lysias what had happened. Who, when he heard thereof, was confounded and discouraged because neither such things as he would were done unto Israel, nor such things as the king commanded him would come to pass. The next year, the, the next year therefore, following Lysias, gathered together three score thousand choice men of foot and five thousand horsemen that he might subdue them. So Lysias gathered more men. Three score going into 60,000 men of on foot and 5,000, 65,000 men. Go ahead. So, so they came into Idumea and pitched their tents at Basura. And Judas met them with 10,000 men. So you had, a heathen had 65,000 men. And Judas and them had only 10,000 men. Go ahead. And when he saw that mighty army, he prayed and said, Blessed art thou, O Savior of Israel, who didst quell the violence of the mighty man by the hand of thy servant David, and gave us the host of strangers into the hands of Jonathan, the son of Saul, and his armor bearer. Shut up this army in the hand of thy people Israel, and let them be confounded in their power and horsemen. Make them to be of no courage, and cause the boldness of their strength to fall away, and let them quake at their destruction. Cast them down with the sword of them that love thee. And let all those that know thy name praise thee with thanksgiving. So they joined battle. And they were slain of the host of Lysias, about 5,000 men. Even before them were they slain. Now when Lysias saw his army put to flight, and the manliness of Judas' soldiers. And the manliness of Judas' soldiers. Go ahead. And how they were ready either to live or die valiantly. He went into Antiochia. And gathered together a company of strangers, and having made his army greater than it was, he purposed to come again into Judea. Then said Judas and his brethren, Behold, our enemies are discomfited. Let us go up to cleanse and dedicate the sanctuary. So read again, um, read again one more time. Then said Judah and his brethren, Behold, our enemies are discomfited. So after the second battle he won, he said, Our enemies are now discomfited. We defeated them. Let's go and clean this temple now. now we have, while we have the time. Go ahead. Let us go up to cleanse and dedicate the sanctuary. Let us go up and cleanse and dedicate the sanctuary or the temple. Come on. Then said Judas and his brethren. No, 37. Sorry. Upon this, all the hosts assembled themselves together and went up into Mount Zion. And when they saw the sanctuary desolate and the altar profane, and the gates burned up, and shrubs growing into the courts as in a forest or in one of the mountains. Yea, and the priest's chambers pulled down. They rent their clothes and made great lamentation and cast ashes upon their heads and fell down flat to the ground upon their faces and blew an alarm with the trumpets and cried toward heaven. Then Judas appointed certain men to fight against those that were in the fortress until they had cleansed the sanctuary. So he chose priests of blameless conversation 
such as had pleasure in the law, who cleansed the sanctuary and bear out the defiled stones into an unclean place. Right. Uh -huh. And when as they consulted what to do with the altar of burnt offerings, which is profane, they thought it best to pull it down, lest it should be a reproach to them because the heathen had defiled it. Wherefore, they pulled it down Come on. and laid up the stones in the mountain of the temple in a convenient place until there should come a prophet to show what should be done with them. So they weren't sure what to do. So they, said, they said, listen, we don't know what to do with this stuff. Let a prophet be raised up among us to, let, to show us, to guide us what to do. Go ahead. Then they took whole stones according to the law and built a new altar according to the former and made up the sanctuary and the things that were within the temple. And hallowed the courts. They made also new holy vessels, and into the temple they brought the candlestick and the altar of burnt offerings and of incense and of the table. And upon the altar they burned incense, and the lamps that were upon the candlestick they lighted, that they might give light in the temple. Menorahs, go ahead. Furthermore, they set the loaves upon the table and spread out the veils, and finished all the works which they had begun to make. Now in the five and twentieth day of the ninth month, which is called the month Kaslu, in the hundred forty and eighth year, they rose up three times in the morning. They offered sacrifice according to the law upon the new altar of burnt offerings which they had made. Look at what time and what day the heathen had profaned it. Even in that was it dedicated with songs and citherns and harps and cymbals. Yet again, 54. Look at what time and what day the heathen had profaned it. So the same day and time that the heathen had profaned the temple and brought in all kinds of idols and, and, and unclean animals and so forth to sacrifice in it. Read again. Look at what time and what day the heathen had profaned it. So the same it, time and day that the heathen profaned it. Go ahead. Even in that was it dedicated with songs and citherns and harps and cymbals. Even in that same time, that same day, was it cleansed? And it was cleansed and dedicated. So that's where the word, the term Hanukkah comes. The, word, the term Hanukkah comes from that. It means dedicate. To dedicate. All right? Read on. Then all the people fell upon their faces, worshiping and, get, and praising the God of heaven, who had given them good success. Come on. And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days and offered burnt offerings of gladness and sacrifice the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. Where they kept the dedication. They kept the dedication. They kept the feast of the dedication. Where they kept Hanukkah. Go ahead. They decked also the forefront of the temple with crowns of gold and with shields. And the gates and the chambers they renewed and hanged doors upon them. So they had decorations, of course. Decorations with shields, things of that nature. That's decorations. They didn't put up a tree. They didn't put gifts under it. Put a star on top with a white angel, butt naked baby. Pedophile angel, child molest baby, you know what I'm talking about, on a damn tree. They had shields and helmets and things of that nature, all right, all in decorating the proper decorations for that time and that moment, as we do today. Hey, and you know what's heavy about that? If you leave the woman to put those decorations up, you're going to get that stuff. Why are you seeing, you hearing about shields and swords? Because the scriptures tell you the most high is a man of war. And it took a war to take back the church, to take back the place where they fellowship. So that's why a lot of times you want to keep that spirit, that weak, effeminate spirit in check. Because the scriptures tell you from the beginning of the Bible that the Most High is a man of war. Now watch this. It spoke about how detailed they cleanse the church. You brothers and sisters should be honored that you're in a place that's following this structure. Why? Because if you go into any church on Sunday now, what you're going to see? White man Jesus, women with their heads uncovered, pork, Christmas decorations, every single thing that's wrong. That our history is documented here of what it took to set up the church according to the standard of the way the Most High God got it. I guarantee you if you search all of New Jersey, all of New York City, you're not going to find any church that's following these standards. You're in an exclusive place. Where people are going into the history and setting up things according to the way God wanted. You're not seeing no white, uh, no window panes of white uh, 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 St. John and St. Patrick and all that stupid stuff that you see on the church. That's dishonorable in the eyes of God. So it's a big deal for us to set up the sanctuaries according to the way the Most High God. Anytime you're ready to attack the church, go to these scriptures right here.
It shows you all these churches are out of order. Every last one of them. Go ahead, Deacon. Go ahead. Thus was there very great gladness among the people for that the reproach of the heathen was put away. Come on. Moreover, Judas and his brethren, with the whole congregation of Israel, ordained the days, that the days of the dedication of the altar should be kept in their season. Kept when? In their season. Based upon the moon. Kept in their, this is a seasonal feast. Mm -hmm. Kept in their season. In this instance, the mean season, this feast day falls in the winter. And the moons assure us of that. All right, go ahead. From year to year by the space of eight days. From the five and twentieth day of the month, Kassalu, with mirth and gladness. Mirth and gladness. Go ahead. And that time also they builded up this Mount Zion with high walls and strong towers round about. Lest the Gentiles should come and tread it down, and they had it done as they had done before. So they reinforced the walls around the temple to make sure that what happened before will never happen again regarding the second temple. That's how protective they were of the sanctuary where they went to worship the Most High God. Think about that. After they cleansed up the temple, they put up a wall because they were focused on keeping the place. That's when, once you destroy where we worship, you destroy our connection to the Father. Y'all got to look at how important it is to solidify a place for men, women, and children to come in and connect to the Father spiritually for them to say, after we finish cleaning it, that's not enough. Let's set up a wall to keep the heathen out, to keep the wicked out. Right. Uh, yeah, John 10. Let's see if the Messiah kept this speech there as well. John 10, 22. Book of John, chapter 10, verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication. And, and it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication. It was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication. So they, they also commemorated this day as well. Go ahead, during this time. Go ahead. And it was winter. And it was what? And it was winter. It was in the right season. It was the mean season. It was winter. Go ahead. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Because that's where the feast day was kept and observed, the sanctuary. So the Messiah walked in there observing it as well. So he gave honor to this day as well as we should. Now, get real quick, Daniel 8. Let's see what I want real quick. Daniel 8, hold on. moment yes so this history is very important because it sets the standards for how we're supposed to be today a lot of y'all want to play church y'all will leave here and just look for another church to join you know because you're not in the right spirit okay you want to be in a place not that you like you want to be in a place where God's presence is being honored were the things that pertain to the Most High God. Because in the world, that's what you do. It was a nice choir. Everybody gave me hugs where I came in. That's not what this church, the sanctuary was about. The sanctuary, when we read in the scriptures, was always under attack by outside forces and internal Israelites that didn't like God's order to be instituted. So you always had to have strong men with a dominant mindset to look for the enemy and look for uh, anything that can take it down and put order and structure in place so that it can't be broken. Because once you break the place where we come to serve God, you break the minds and the spirits of the people and the heathen have control over us. Why would they go look to say, you know, let's make them eat pork. Let's bring whores in there. Let's stop them from circumcising their, their, their children. Let's let them play sports on the Sabbath. Because they know that us staying away from those things connects us to our power. And what the, the other nations want that they don't have is a connection to the Father. And if they can't get it, they will destroy you. If they see that you are connecting to the Father, they will stop you. They will destroy you. So they have to search you out. They got to watch you. Which sister got her head covered? Why she got a skirt on? Why this brother got a beard on? 
why he's refusing pork, shrimp, crab, lobster. Let's find ways to make them do it, to make them indulge in that. Let's send murmurers in. Let's send spies in. Go ahead. Daniel 8, um, verse 8. Let me read the verse 14. Daniel chapter 8, verse 8. Therefore, the he goat waxed very great. The he goat, this is Alexander the Great. You got some history. This is going into, I'm going, kind of going backwards. This is Alexander the Great here. All right. This is the guy that pretty much started or was a forerunner of the Greek Empire coming in, coming into power or gaining power when he when he unified all the European nations within that within that realm to come together as one. Not all of them, but in Greece. Go ahead. Therefore, the he goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken. He got sick and died. Go ahead. And for it came, and for it came up four notable ones. Toward the four winds of heaven. The four winds of the old, the four winds of the old side, the four winds of the old world. Go ahead. And out of them, excuse me, and out of one of them came forth a little horn. Because when Alexander the Great died, he had four generals. He had Lysimachus, Cassander, Ptolemy, and Seleucus. He had Lysimachus, Lysimachus, um, Cassander, Ptolemy, and Seleucus. And out of those four came Antiochus. He came out of Seleucus, okay? He came out of a man named Seleucus, S-E-L-E-U-C-U-S. All right, Antiochus came out of him, go ahead, out of those four notable ones, go ahead. And out, of, and out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great. He got powerful, he gained power, go ahead. Toward the south. Toward the south would be Egypt. And toward the east. Toward the east would be Persia. And toward the pleasant land. And his eyes are toward the pleasant land, Israel. He conquered these one by one. Go ahead. And it was waxed great, even to the host of heaven. Meaning and he Israel, the host of heaven is referring to us. Go ahead. And he cast down some of the hosts and of the stars to the ground. He cast and down some of the hosts and of the stars, not, not the actual stars of heaven, but we, us, we are recognized as the stars of God, Israel. Go ahead. And stamped upon them. And stamped upon, upon us how? By, by Hellenizing us, by basically Americanizing us in this instance, okay, in a modern instance, go ahead, Europeanizing us, go ahead. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. By the him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the temple was defiled. He's behind it, go ahead. And the place of his sanctuary was cast down. This is what Maccabees and them had to come behind and clean up. And dedicate and cleanse. Based upon what we're reading here, this is Daniel. Daniel wrote this down in, in clear, concise detail, hundreds of years before it took place. Let's turn the Bible to true book. Because he wrote this down during the time of Babylonian captivity. There was no Alexander. These four men were not even born. They weren't even a thought when Daniel wrote this down. Go ahead. That was verse 11. That, um, read on. Verse, verse 14. Yes, sir. Verse 12. And, it, and an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. Because our people, the, the host is referring to the wicked of our people who choose to give in to white supremacy. Many of our brothers um, and sisters today, who are your brothers, who are your sisters, literally your family members, have chosen to give in to white supremacy today as our forefathers gave into white supremacy during his reign. Gave into the Greek philosophy, the Greek fashion, the Greek culture, the Greek language. They embraced it and turned, them, turned their backs on their God. While remnants of us who understood our, who our God was, who the enemy was, we resisted. Many of you who are in this room, we hope that you are the ones who have resisted. But many of you are, are related to those who have chosen to give in. Unlike our forefathers, Mattathias, who was the father of Jewish Maccabees, we read about earlier, who was responsible for the cleansing of the temple that Antiochus and his soldiers and his men had defiled. Read on. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. By reason of transgression. Our people chose to violate God's laws. Go ahead. And he cast down the truth to the ground. And the truth, the laws of God, the righteousness of our people was cast down to the ground. That's why I said earlier, he says he stamped upon them. He stumped the truth out of us. 
out of our people who chose to allow it. Go ahead. And it practiced and prospered. And it practiced his doctrine, practiced and prospered. Go ahead. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another said, saint said unto the certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation? To give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. And the transgression of desolation goes into the time when the Greeks had defiled the temple. And the temple remained desolate for a certain duration of time. We're going to get to that. For a certain duration of time before it was cleansed. Read on. So, that's it. so it's here the saints asking, how long will this be? This saint is going into the Maccabean family. Going into Mattathias. Real quick, hold on. Get first Maccabees 2, real quick. Read verse 1 to 5. No, to 7. First Maccabees chapter 2 and verse 1. In those days arose Mattathias, the son of John, the son of Simeon, the priest of the sons of Jarib. From Jerusalem and dwelt in Modin. So Mattathias was the son of a man named Simeon. Thus the term Hasmonean dynasty. Okay, our family, our ancient forefathers were known. This family is historically recognized or known as the Hasmonean dynasty. The Ha means the. Simonian means Simeon. The house of Simeon dynasty. Because Mattathias came from a man, a Levite priest. Named Simeon, Hasmonean or the Simeon dynasty. And the Maccabean family derives from this man, Mattathias. So we're going to read about now. Read on. Verse 2. And he had five sons. Joannan. Joannan's one son. Called Caddis. Simon called Phasi. Two. Judah, who was called Maccabeus. Maccabeus in Greek. Maccabeus. Maccaba means hammer. Because he was the fighter. He was the, he was the tough kid. Of all the sons, he was the tough guy. You know, you got a bunch of sons. I got a bunch of sons. You got one son, or maybe you might have two. This, in this instance, one, that's the, 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 the tough one, the gangster one. You get in the fights at school. He got a bad temper. They say, this guy, this kid, right, that boy right there, that's a hammer right there. He's going to be a fighter. The mad thighs recognized his son's gifts. He said, that one right there is a thinker. That one right there, that's the fighter. Judas is the fighter, so he'll be the leader when I'm gone. Go ahead. Eleazar called Avarin for, and Jonathan, whose surname was Aphis. That's five. So he had five sons. Right? Go, ahead. Go ahead. And when he saw... So, this, so the year, Mattathias was the one who initiated the revolt against the Greek agenda. The, the Europeanizing of our people, Mattathias was the forerunner of the battle that his son Judas continued, and Simon continued. So this is the year 167 B.C. Write that down. This is the year of the revolt. 167 B.C. is the year of the revolt. Go ahead. And when he saw the blasphemies that were committed in Judah and Jerusalem, he said, what was me? Wherefore was I born to see this misery of my people? Going back to what Daniel said, that same saint, how long would this go on? That's what we read in Daniel earlier. Mm. He saw saints speaking one to another. He saw saints speaking together saying, how long will this continue? Read again. He said, woe is me. Wherefore was I born to see this misery of my people and of the holy city and to dwell there when it was delivered into the hand of the enemy and delivered into the hand of the enemy and the sanctuary into the hand of strangers? Verse 8. Her temple has become as a man without glory. Her okay. glorious vessels are carried away into captivity. Her infants are, are slain in the street. They were killing our babies in the street. Go ahead. Her young men with the sword of the enemy. They're killing our men. Go ahead. What nation have not had a part in her kingdom and gotten of her spoils? So now we know who that saint was that Daniel saw in his vision. Go back to Daniel 8 again. All her ornaments are taken away of a free woman. She Daniel, is no, no, no. Daniel 8 again. Daniel 8. Oh, sorry. Go back to verse. Almost done. Go back to verse uh, 13. Daniel chapter 8, verse 13. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, 
How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? So Matthias said the same thing. Go ahead. And he said unto me, unto 2,300 days. Unto 2,300 days. Go ahead. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So after those days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. All right. So read on. And it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning. Then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. That's it. No, um, get a uh, Daniel 12. Wrap it up soon. Daniel 12, read 11. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 11. And from that time, and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand. The abomination that makes desolate is the white man. Is the Edomite man. That's who that is. Edom. That came in and defiled the sanctuary. And brought idols into the sanctuary. That all basically amounts to him, to him Esau. That's what it's talking about. And then he went and then he, and then he did. Then Christ warned about, about, about it happening again when Rome came in. Because it's the same people. The Greco-Roman Empire. Came and did the same thing by destroying the second temple that we dedicated during this time. Read again, verse 11 again. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Go ahead. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. So that's what ended up happening. Jewish Maccabees is that one that was blessed. To see the, te the temple cleansed. So you count the year from 171 to 1 to 1 uh, to 165. So the year 171 to 165 BC, that is 2300 days. That's what's going into that time frame. All right? 171 to 165 BC. That's the, that's the 2300 days. All right? So now. Um, one more thing. Let me wrap it up. Uh, I'm sorry, what do I want? First Maccabees. Do first Maccabees real quick. First Maccabees real fast. I'm gonna wrap it up. First Maccabees one. Maccabees 1. Um, we're going to read to verse, verse 41. 141. First Deacon, I'll come here. On um, 141. Yes, sir. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Mm -hmm. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. So there's the history of it earlier, Daniel 8. It's about the, um, regarding uh, the four notable ones and the little on the great, a little horn shall come out of those four great ones. That's him right here. Antiochus. Antiochus. Epiphanes, meaning God manifested on earth because he believed he was a God on earth. He was a psychopath. Okay, he called himself Epiphanes. People called him Epimenes, meaning psycho. He was crazy. So he called himself Antiochus Epiphanes. They called him Antiochus Epimenes, meaning nutcase. So this guy was, his ego was huge. He was evil as hell. All right, read on. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. So he pushed democracy, that all should be one people, which they borrowed from the Persians, and they, and they bought it, which the Persians got from Babylon. All should be one people, from where America gets it from, because democracy was born in Greece. So you're reading it here, that all should be one people. Go ahead. And everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. So 
in order for all to be one people, everyone should do what? Read 42 again. And everyone should leave his laws. Everyone should leave their laws. Democracy is a is a is a politic is a is a policy that basically tells you not to keep laws, laws pertaining to your God, basically, but rather their rather theirs, his. Go ahead. And everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed. So according. All, the, all, all, all the heathen went along with this. So that's why in America today, one, one nation under God, indivisible, all nations come over here. What do they do? They conform. They're in big, they're in three piece. They go from wearing their Muslim attire to a three piece suit. Their Hindu attire to a three piece suit. Their three piece, their, their, um, their, their kimonos to a three piece suit. They change. They conform really quickly. A lot of these nations come into, come into the faith. They, they come into, um, not the faith, come into this land and they, they conform immediately. Especially when, they, when you're in a land that pushes the, 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 the um, do doctrine of all being one people. Go ahead. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. Then it goes and says, the commandment of the king, all the Israelites also consented or agreed to his religion. Because democracy of Greece is the same as Christianity. In America, it is, it is the religion, Christianity is the religious form of democracy. It's the exact same thing. All inclusive, all be one, it's the same doctrine. That's why I said everyone, according to his commandment, to do what? Leave his laws. What's Christianity teach you to do? Leave the laws alone. Christianity tells you to go against legalism. It's the same thing in a religious religious spin on it. But it's the same thing. And the longer you stay away from the laws, the longer the devil has on this earth. That's why the scriptures say, he knoweth he had but a short time. What is what, what clock is he using? The clock that the Israelites are on. He's using 144,000 clock. He's watching 144,000 get sealed. And that's how he's making his moves. The more you people turn away from keeping the commandments and betray us and attack us, the longer Satan has on this earth. Go ahead. Verse 43 again. 43. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. Go ahead. For the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem. So, the, so now, remember, I gave y'all dates. I gave y'all 171 to 164. When you research it, the dates vary. It'll be 170, 71 or 175. I'll just give you a roundabout date. 170s to 160s, this took place. You can put that down. 170s to 160s is when Antiochus came and overthrew us, and we revolted against them. 170s to 160s BC. That's where this falls in between. So no one's confused. All right, so during this time, we're talking about the 170s to the 160s BC. This took place. All this is taking place. The temple being defiled. People being cleansed, people being defiled, people being cleansed. All right, read on. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, that they should follow the strange laws of the land. What he sent were mandates. He sent letters saying, you must do A, B, and C. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. We're experiencing that today, are we not? Yes, sir. We're experiencing this today. What you are going to do, not what you would like to do, or what you are going to do, or else. We're experiencing, that, we're experiencing that same abomination of desolation today by the same group of people today called Americans. But they were called Romans before that. They were called Greeks before that. Spanish before that. French before that. Portuguese before that. Or during, or whatever. Same time, whatever. British. You get my point. Go ahead. And forbid burnt offerings and sacrifices and drink offerings in the temple. So these things were forbidden. You being able to observe your faith, that was forbidden. You were forbidden to now observe your laws 
you basically lost your civil rights. You lost your religious rights during this time in Greece. Or not Greece, in Jerusalem. And guess what? You lose it today. You try to get an exemption letter, they say, no, we don't accept that no more. It's the same thing happening all over again on a smaller scale. This is right here. This is turned up here. What we're reading right here, it was turned up. He said, listen, or die during this time. Now it's lose your job. If you lose your job, you can make money. If you can make money, you become homeless. And then you die. It's just slower, but it's the same thing. The same decree from the same people for the same purpose. To destroy God's people is no difference. We're the targets. Every, every single disease, for some odd reason, comes from where black people are at. It don't come from Europe, it comes from where black, South Africa, Ghana, and they since Sierra Leone. And they got to test the drugs where we are. And test the drugs where they say it came from. <laughs> right. Even though the first ones to catch it were in China and Spain, I That's think, right. right? Yes. But somehow we got tested over there. Tested in Africa. In Africa instead. Yes. Just giving you a prime example of the same people doing the exact same thing. Against the same exact people. Read it again. For 45. The, for and forbid. Burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple, and that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days. Meaning no longer allowed legally to keep festivals, your feast days, or your Sabbaths anymore. Go ahead. And because pollute. you're following, because by you not doing that, by you not keeping your feast days that God gave you to keep, you're keeping his religion. You're keeping his policy. Greco- policy, Greek policy. You're becoming a Greek. When you go, when you are illegal, when you are anti-legalism, you're becoming a Greek. You're being Europeanized, brainwashed, whitewashed. That's what's happening to you. When you celebrate the Christmas and the New Year's, you are being a Greek. You are being Europeanized. Because that's not biblical. Not one, you do not find any scripture in the Bible of any kind when the Messiah was born during the winter time. Not one place where it says he was born December 25th. Not one place you find God saying, set up a tree in honor of his birth. Not one place you find a Messiah saying, my birthday is that day. Put a tree in your house and put gifts under it to honor my birth. That's not in the Bible. It ain't in there. So when you keep it knowing that, that's because you have consented to what? The laws of the king. Because you want to help the devil. That's how the devil keeps his power. Always remember, everything you do against us is to strengthen the devil. Every time you fight against our teachings is to strengthen the devil. The devil has his workers. So God is creating his workers. And his workers are ready to go to war. That's why I say in Psalms 94, who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Who will stand for me against the workers of iniquity? No sh body should be thinking about no Christmas tree, Christmas decorations, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Unless it's to burn up Santa Claus. We got to do a burn Santa Claus campaign. Remember when we did the burn white Jesus? We got to do a burn Santa Claus. Somebody has set a, a, a tree on fire, I think, in, in Philly. Yes, yes, in, 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 in uh, New York. New York. They lit a tree up in front of the news station. All praise to the Lord. All praises. Okay. That's a, great, that's a good man. That's a good man. I hope you don't, don't get caught. I hope you don't catch him. Very good. Very good. He was a homeless don't, man. Don't do that. <laughs> y'all don't do it. We're not telling y'all to do it. Don't do that. Y'all don't do it. But we did, I'm just giving <laughs> respect to the man that did do it. Yes. Y'all not. Y'all don't do it. He, the, still, he saw on the news, mad. Oh, how could he do this? How could he make? How could he do this? I just care less. Because the tree is of the devil. It's a Babylonian custom. Hey, but what we what we read in here, right? We read in democracy that we read. That right. everybody should be one people. But in democracy, there is no such thing as freedom of religion. For our people. For for the Israelites. You right. understand it? Because in the time of the Greeks, you all see what they did. Even even today, what they do, they set up their religion. It's still not really no freedom of religion today. Right, right, you're Because right. they direct you in what you gotta they already right. they already set up the image of the beast. The whole earth is worshiping the image of the beast. Right. You understand? So it's no, it's not really no freedom of religion. 
that you hear they be saying. You understand? Because anytime we, when you teach in this truth, what you get, you always get opposition. You get, oh, you in a hate group. You, you know, that's what we've been getting for the longest, man. You understand? Give me a prime example that Malachi just made. Prime example. They'll tell you in the workplace, you're not allowed to, dis you're not allowed to discuss religion and politics, right? Everyone knows that. Those of us who work, you know that. But they'll set up a Christmas tree and decorations on the workplace. But isn't Christmas tree a symbolism of religion that we should not discuss in the workplace? But that stands because they want you to observe certain, you have the freedom to observe certain religions. Not all, certain ones that this place advocates. That's why there's a huge Christmas tree in New York. And, what, and me, where I'm at, I'm in, in Jersey, they have huge, giant menorahs with eight candles. The menorah has seven candles. Not eight, not nine, seven. Don't, don't believe anything more. Seven. The rest is garbage. That's a GMO menorah. That's not a real menorah. It's a GMO. I don't know where that came from. It's a clone. I don't know where that came from. Mutant menorah. And there's no story in the Bible about there was no oil and we had to light uh, 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 one of the lamps. That's no. made up. People keep asking me, are we supposed to do that? You can't find that in the Bible. That's something that Esau made up. It's fictitious. They ran out of oil. The oil they ran out of is wisdom. I'm going to read it now. I'll, I'll, read it for, I'll read it for you. In 1 Maccabees 4, we read it earlier. Highlight this, this verse, 59. It says, 1 Maccabees 4, 59. And upon the altar they burned incense. And the lamps that they were upon the candlestick, they lighted. That they might give light in the temple. They had plenty of oil. They lit all the menorahs. So that's BS. So 1 Maccabees 4, 59. Let you know we have plenty of oil. And all the lamps are lit to give light to the temple. Not each day. Oh, no, I must I must burn the temple. One at a time, I must do this. Get out of here, man. Hey, that's, that's called Jewish fable. Yes, Jewish fable. Scripture says, don't give heed to Jewish fable. Where were we at? He was at verse uh, 45. Right, right, let's go. And forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple. Yep. And that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days uh -huh. and pollute the sanctuary and holy people. So the agenda of this ancient democracy was to pollute and destroy God's people. Don't think for one second that the politics of today and the CDC, all that stuff, these, the, the, all these jab and all that stuff, don't go hand in hand. It's all sinister, it's sinister and it all works together against one people. Don't think it's all separate. Oh, that's politics. This is a virus. It's all the same. And what's, what's, so, what's so serious with that, Dick, is that back then when they, they took the law, they forbid us from keeping our laws. And see, secretly what they did, they took the book of the law and they painted their images right. and their likenesses in the Bible was trying to set themselves up as the people of God. Right. Same way how they had us following Greek customs. Same way how today we following all, kind, all of these American customs and Greek customs and Roman customs. All right, the same thing they was doing back then and they were setting themselves up as the people. Right. Okay, same thing they're doing today. Read on. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Right. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols. Set up groves. Is it groves? Um, altars and chapels. That's your churches. In the black community, you'll find a, in the Hispanic community, you'll find a church on every corner. And crime committed right in front of it. Excessively. Because it does nothing for the people. It maintains the evil within the land. Within the community. Because the laws are what? Done away with. In these chapels. And it's put in place to make you feel a false perception of your serving a God. Right. So why should you change? You got a Negro who will walk around selling drugs, walk by a church and do this. And do the sign of the cross. 
God bless these drugs today, Lord, please. Put the uh, cops catch me through my drug. That's right. That's uh, the damn chapels today. Or a drug dealer coming into the church and giving the pastor money, saying, only God can judge me. Right. And that's why you got these wicked niggers in your communities. There's nobody telling them that they're evil. And give that to the church. The church is set up for that. That's a whorehouse. All these churches, there's no good church on this earth except the Israelites rising up. And y'all gonna see that. 47 again. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh. And promote the eating of the pork. Promote eating of swine. Swine. You turn the, turn the TV on, um, bacon, bacon into this, bacon that, bacon this. All that stuff is pushed highly on our people, especially in the media. Europe, European controlled media, pushing of the pork, eat the pork, eat the pork all the time. Go ahead. And unclean beasts. And other unclean beasts like the lobster, the shrimp, the clam, the aphrodisiacs, the catfish, all that stuff is unclean beasts too. Oysters, chitlins, duck, turtle, frog, legs, unclean beasts, rabbit. Go ahead. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised. And then, and then on top of that, they push the law saying you are not allowed to circumcise your children. Now they're trying to push the law saying, oh, by doing that today, they're pushing the vibration of that's abuse. They say it's barbaric. They say it's barbaric and abuse and it's of no, it's not useful at all to that's do right. that. It has no purpose. But God says it has a purpose. It's better to believe in God than believe in what man says. Go ahead. That they also should... That they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. How? Because now they forget who they are and begin to follow somebody else. They go from being children of Israel to children of America. From Israel to African American. Israel to Latino. Israel to um, Hispanic, Hispanic. Israel to nigger. Israel to spick. Israel to savage. Israel to monkey, Israel to Haitian, Israel to Puerto Rican, Israel to Mexican. All manner of uncleanness and profanation. False names, false last names, false nationalities. All the same damn thing. Because you become one people. Go ahead. To the end. So wait, so the conclusion of democracy of the Greeks, starting in Greece, and now here in America, and other parts of European, and other parts of colonized lands where our people are found to the end what to the end they might forget the law that was the agenda to the end they might forget the law because without our laws we're nothing go ahead and change all the ordinances and change all the ordinances change our laws go ahead and get rid of us go ahead and whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. He said that we should be put to death or face major consequences. So in this time, we must remain holy, we must remain faithful, and the spirit, as the bishop says, and maintain the same integrity and honor that our forefathers, Mattathias, and the Asmonian family did. And with that, happy feast, dedication. All oh, praises to the Most High. Hey, you know what's the worst thing you could be in this truth? The worst thing you could do, that's why the scriptures say, it's better for you not to have known the truth than to come here and then turn your back on it. Give me Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 real quick. Verse 8, Hebrews, Hebrews 6, verse 4. Hebrews 6 and 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. You came here and you learned the truth. You were once enlightened to what it meant to be an Israelite. You put your fringes on. You changed your diet. You started keeping the Sabbath. 
You are enlightened to this understanding. Read on. For it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. You tasted that the kingdom is coming. Heaven is the kingdom. It's not a pie in the sky with wings and fairy tales and Greek mythology. We're tasting heaven now because we're conforming to what God. Remember our father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You've what? Read it again. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. Because you're here to set up the kingdom of heaven. Read on. And were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. You were made partakers of keeping the laws. You learned how to observe the Sabbath. Sister, you took off them pads. You covered your head. Brother, you grew your beard. You were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Read on. And have tasted the good word of God. You're not learning Christianity, Methodist, Baptist, Catholic, Jehovah's Witness. You're getting the good word now. You're getting the breakdowns. You're getting the proper understanding. Read on. And the powers of the world to come. And you now know where the real power is. It's being an Israelite. It's not being black, Hispanic, Mexican, Negro, African. Real power on this earth is being an Israelite. And you've tasted that. Read on. If they shall fall away. Some of you are going to fall away and go back to being a nigga. Because you love it. <laughs> a nigga and a traitor. That's the worst, two worst things to be. You're going to fall right back into that. Read on. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. We cannot bring you back. We cannot bring you back once you turn into that old nigger you was and a traitor. That's why Judas Iscariot, after he realized, after Satan left him, what he went and did, he killed himself. He killed himself. He realized how serious what he did. That's why Christ said, before you offend any of these little ones, go hang yourself. That's all through the scriptures. Read on. Seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. You know how you put Christ to an open shame? When you come here, learn about him, and you show it's not working on you. You show that you're, you haven't been born again. Your spirit has not been renewed. You set a bad example for everybody else that thought you changed. And you showing them, no, that Bible don't work on me. So you put Christ to an open shame. And a lot of brothers and sisters, that's the worst thing you could do. Better you just leave quietly and enjoy the rest of your meaningless life than to come here and not see that the rebuilding of Israel, the rebuilding of the nation, you are part of the greatest movement known to mankind. So that's how y'all supposed to think. Anytime that spirit get on you to become a traitor, to become a liar, to become a slanderer, to become hateful. Okay, you're not here to make friends. You're here to deliver your soul from the destruction to come. Always keep that in your head. Um, does everybody have bread and wine? Are we going to break bread or y'all eating the food? Did y'all get bread and wine? So we can break bread. I see people with oh, at their table. Well, I know a lot of you are standing and you're getting your food. We're going to still break the bread anyway because um, say that again. Some people online. Okay. So we're going to break bread and wine in honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Jesus Christ laying down his life so that you can have life. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as off as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. 
For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. And even in what we just read, death is promised to you for betrayal. That's why it says, let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, you sitting down here, you breaking bread, and you're scheming and you're a traitor and a murderer, eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. That's putting him to an open shame. You don't realize the importance of coming into this truth and breaking bread. This is not a light thing, brothers and sisters. Hey, yo, 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 dig. When Christ was doing this, breaking bread and drinking the wine, right? When he did that, he was doing it just after he spoke to Judas and said, yo, man, you're going to betray me. He said, listen. And when he was saying it, he's saying it to Judas. He was saying it to that dude that would betray him. He said, listen, this is my blood. This is my body that I'm going to shed for you. He said, if you do it unworthily, you bring in damnation on yourself. And Judas sat right there and drink, eat the bread and drink the wine. And still went and betrayed Christ. That was Christ warning him like, listen, man, I know what you're going to do. Listen, don't do this. Son. You know what I mean? So the same thing goes for you, brothers and sisters, today. You know, you sit down and you eat and you drink, the, break the bread and you know you don't really believe this. You know you, you are murmurer. You know you, are, you, you, you know you hate this truth. Okay, the Bible says you're going to bring damnation to yourself. Okay, so you'll be very mindful. Very, be very mindful, man. That's why I said just leave quietly. The ones that leave and try to get people to join them and go on Facebook and YouTube, you are the real evil. Not the white man. You are the real evil of this earth. Because you've learned. You understand. You know what we're trying to do. You know we're fighting against the world. You know what we're up against. And you still say, I'm going to join in taking them down. You should be ashamed of yourself. There's no, you, th there's a scripture that said you should have never been born. I pray that that spirit never falls on anybody else here. For you to come into this truth and learn this and then attack this truth. You are a waste of life. And the scriptures say it's going to be as though you've never been. Your name will only come up to speak about how not to be.
I sent you guys an image for the online request. Could you bring it up? I want to warn the people about this because for some reason people are not listening. That was some beautiful dancing. Your sisters need to teach me how to dance. I forgot. You got the image from the online request? There's people online using the bishop's image to solicit funds. Did y'all put it up? I don't see it. It's a scam. We only uh, gather money on our website. We have our emails listed. There's somebody here with a, a scam using the bishop's image. So all y'all teachers online, every time you do class, make sure y'all explain this to the people. The ones who are sending money to these people, you're idiots. Because a lot of y'all are sometime Israelites. You don't watch every week. You're on social media. You're all over the place. You're not connected to the community. And people are sending this idiot money. This thief money. It could be Esau. And they know how gullible y'all are. So if y'all going to donate, y'all go to our webpage. IsraelUnite.org and you go to donations. Or you mail it to the mailing address. Israel United in Christ. P.O. Box 2695. Newburgh, New York, 12550. Those are the only two places. If you want to send money there, you just put Booster Club on it. You can send Booster Club, uh, at the, mail it to the Newburgh address or on the website, just put, um, Booster Club. Cause a lot of you ask, how do I join? How do I support? Only those two places. Never do you see us online soliciting money on any social media. Okay? Unless you hear it come from us, don't send it. If someone is making your request, contact us. We're very easily uh, accessible. You reach out to us, you contact us. Shout out Tuesday. Y'all could uh, mail, send mail to the bishop there or send inquiry there or our emails. But stop helping these devils get rich. Pan the camera around. Let the, the world see what they, let the people see what they're missing, man. Come on. Let them see these beautiful faces, these beautiful families. Let them see this packed house. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Zoom out. Look at the turnout. Look at these beautiful faces as far as the eye can see. There's the rebuilding of the temple. On a Monday, Tell me where you see this much Israelites on a Monday. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Let's get the decorations, bro. We got to rub it in for the people who didn't come. I'm Friday. I'm going to tell y'all you missed it. Look at the food. Look at the table. Look at the lions. Hey, zoom in on the lion, bro. The lions. Okay, look at the shields. Do, do we not read about the helmets? Do we not read about that? Look at the helmets. Look at the menorah. Seven candlestick menorah. Hmm. 
Okay, this is beautiful. This is what the rebuilding of a nation looks like. This is what brotherhood looks like. This is what camaraderie looks like. This is what greatness looks like. Men of Israel, are you ready? What time is it? What time is it? Faith, patience, salvation. Faith, patience, salvation. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Unity. 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 And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. His what? His what? His what? 